tired. Hey, Raj. Hey, Raj. Yo. You tell me a story. Fuck you. Ooh, that's my favorite. Can't get no sleep around here for nothing. Mm. Oh, well, I guess I should do something today. <sighs> oh man, forty-eight hours. Good movie, good movie. But you know what? I got some questions about this thing. Just a few questions. You could say five questions I have just a few things that come to mind when I was watching this movie the other day you know when I'm here working you know doing stuff mm. here are my five questions about 48 hours first question I got during the opening scenes Nick Nolte who is clearly uh, not acting a great deal I think uh, portraying you know this drunken just dr blackout drunk every night cop wakes up with his alarm on a watch you know beeping wakes him up that way that's his alarm clock in the morning this i have a question about because i've never been nick nolte blackout drunk which definitely needs to start a uh, hashtag movement by the way i've never been that drunk in my life but i feel he is that way on a daily basis i have a hard time believing a fucking little beep 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 I have a hard time really believing that shit wakes him up out of his comatose state. That dude is pouring booze into his coffee in the morning. You know that guy is blackout drunk every single night. And it would take a freight train driving through a nuclear power plant to wake his ass up. But a little beep, beep, he's like, oh god damn it! I refuse to believe that. How in the world does he, like, have the ultrasonic hearing being as uh, liquored up as he is on a nightly basis? How is this possible? Oh god damn it, I wake up! I gotta get a job! Second question I got. <sighs> when Nick Nolte's character, Kate, shows up back at you know the police station after there's a shootout in the hotel with Gans, fucking Sonny Landon being Sonny Landon, they're like, man, this ended in carnage, this ended in a shootout. Why does everything at the end of the fucking bloodbath fight with you, Gates? Why is that? I really have the question, I was like, really? Really? Who is working at this police station is still surprised that every day Kates doesn't come into work and he has already been involved in at least three fights in a shootout. This guy, I believe, starts a fight and blows up, you know, six shooter fires, you know, the parking meter if it doesn't spit out the right amount of change or something. I refuse to believe Nick Nolte is not getting into fights the entire drive into the police station every single day. I don't believe this. Like, how is this dude just not waking up? Ah, damn it, fucking clock! I get my fucking tie on! I'm take a drink of my beer! Nom, 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 nom. Get to this job! Oh god damn it! His entire police career is probably predicated on paperwork stack thicker than Danny Glover's and Predator 2. I think they just mixed up Danny Glover's personal file with Nolte's character in 48 hours and they got crisscrossed. Somehow. Because listen to the Harrigan's fucking list of all his shit he's done in Predator 2. That sounds more like Nick Nolte's career than Danny Glover's career as a cop. Like, he is not that kind of guy. Nick Nolte is definitely that kind of guy. Kate's is that character. <laughs> Question numero three. When Cates goes to recruit Eddie Murphy's character, Reggie, Reggie Hammond, he goes to the uh, jail, rolls into his cell, which he's sharing with another guy. Poor guy, too, has to listen to Eddie Murphy belt out, you know, song lyrics from his Walkman all day, which is cool for a moment, but imagine living with that shit daily. Roxanne! Like, uh, because what's he going to have, like, 12 songs on a tape? And you know he's got maybe three tapes, maybe. So you're listening to the same, like, 36 songs every day, seven days a week. At least probably six hours a day. Damn, how many AA batteries is he going through? You can get maybe, like, an hour and a half before you have to swap those suckers out. Who provides batteries in jail? Like, how do you sneak in batteries or earn batteries? Can you buy batteries while you're in jail? I never thought about how's he getting the... Uh, power to run this Walkman. 
But that's not my question. That's a side question, though. It's a good question. But our real question is when Kate shows up, goes into the cell. Of course, Reggie can't hear him because he's jamming out on his headphones. So Kate picks up the Walkman, goes up to like where the connector cord is to the headphones. Reggie! And apparently that transfers into the headset and causes Eddie to, Ugh! What? Who are you, man? Headphones don't work like that. Like, getting close to the headset attachment does not work as a microphone. And you can't yell in it. And it makes stuff louder in your head. Or maybe it's just the shrill voice of Nick Nolte just penetrates through anything you might have over your ears. Like, you gotta, you gotta, some blockage in your ear, just have Nick Nolte yell in it. Shit clears right up. Here comes my fourth question. He drives this uh, ragtop. This, you know, blue beat this shit automobile. I really want to know, mainly Cates is the dude who is using like Sully from Commando and just beating him into the car door. And you see this all these dents and dings and beat the shit spots on this car and it's like, I would love to know how many suspects or thugs, punks, suspected killers, domestic abuse calls, jaywalkers that Nick Nolte beats with his fucking car door or the side paneling of his car. Like, how often does he use his car as a interrogation tactic? I think his name is David Patrick Kelly. Just beats him against his car door. And then when he's dragging him into the police station to have him locked up, he's just smashing his head into the fucking counter and he's like, oh, I'll do the work paperwork later. Put him up. What is his ratio? Like, everyone should be expecting him to be in at least three fist fights and a shootout on a daily basis and him hauling in at least four guys a day that he's beat the shit out of with his car and like just lock him up he's a piece of shit what did his vehicle look like when he bought it and in how many years has he had it also throwing that number of how many people he's beaten into this car i think he likes his car because in the second one he buys another one that looks identical to it he gets attached to things reggie i don't feel like he gives a shit about the appearance of things like clearly like look how the dude dresses in real life today i don't know <sighs> all right my last question i have later on in the movie kate's gets frustrated that eddie murphy reggie hammond's not telling him all the information that he needs so he decides at one point he's like you're gonna talk we're gonna fight so he starts taking all of his shit off he's gonna start beating the hell out of reggie so they get into a fight which i love and also he warns reggie that he fights dirty really who is that surprising what about him gives you the impression that he's gonna make sure all hits are above the waistline no eye pokes hair pulls what about him says he's gonna be a clean fighter it amuses me that he's like i fight dirty everything you do kate's is dirty but in the midst of this fight, he's about ready to like knock Eddie Murphy's character out. Like he just starts taking blow after blow after blow to the head. And two patrolmen show up to break this fight up. They are also cops. Like Cates is a cop. Have no idea who he is. He's like, I'm a cop! Look at my badge! And I'm like, oh, well, okay. Do you really believe that everyone on that force doesn't know who Cates is? I feel like his poster is in the office of the police station being like this is kate's try not to piss him off he already hates you just the legend of the police station like how's this guy still got a job he beats the shit out of every suspect he comes across he reeks of alcohol every day he constantly has bruises and fucking marks on his face from fights he's been in he's in a shootout three times a day how does everyone not know who kate's is and what he drives in the second movie another cop tries to give him a parking ticket and Reggie's gotta be like, yeah, it's Kate's. And like, oh shit, just tell him to quit parking here. They should hear Uncle Buck style, this car backfiring as it pulls into the police station every day. And everyone should just be heck busy or something. Kate's is coming through, don't make eye contact. Don't look at me, don't talk to me, please. Please don't tell me who you hate today. I know you hate somebody today. You don't talk to me, Kate's. Those are just five questions that came across my mind over our, if Gary Busey is our uh, patron saint, I feel like the second coming behind him is Nick Nolte. Uh, definitely, I still want that movie made. Nick Nolte, Gary Busey, two burnout cops. The idea alone. I don't know how people are not funding that. All right. That's enough time for me, convicts. That's enough time for me, convicts. I gotta get back to work. It's goddamn popcorn. Oh, yeah, I gotta think. Raj, I'm taking off for the day. All right, man. I'm gonna go watch another 48 hours. You're gonna watch it again?
No, I'm watching another 48 Hours. Not 48 Hours again. It's a sequel. That's a lazy title. I know it's a lazy title. <laughs>